Well, Mnangagwa's sacking has elicited mixed reactions from Zimbabweans. Let's take a look at some of them. Well, it's high time. Uh, things must change, that's all. <laughs> Personally, I think uh, uh, it's haste because we want to hear from their conference because there's a Zanupi and December conference. So I don't know why there is so much haste in replacing him as a Minanga. This is news to me. I do not know if the allegations that have triggered the charges are true. This is shocking. I don't know where we're going or who is next. Well, let's get you the latest now from Zimbabwe. We're joined live from the capital Harare by CGTN's Farai Mokotoya. Uh, Farai, of course, the charges here of uh, alleged disloyalty. At the moment, the VP is the only one who's been fired. But are those perceived to be close to Mnangwagwa also going to be shown the door? Well, indeed, we've seen uh, so far one of the Zanopia provincial structures, that is Manika Land province, uh, putting forward a list of more than 30 party members, including uh, cabinet ministers whom it has dismissed from its structures. Uh, and it's forwarding those names for approval and ratification by the Politburo, which is the most senior organ of the ruling Zanopf. At least two other provinces have already started the process of coming up with lists of people that they also uh, want to dismiss. And we expect that the other province, uh, provinces will do so too. Now, once these names have been brought forward to the Politburo, it will obviously approve or is expected to make a decision to approve those dismissals or outright or uh, to suspend the members for specified periods, which has happened in the past, um, and to take the next action in terms of those members. Uh, so far, 38 members are affected in that province, Manika Land, which I've just spoken about, but we certainly expect that more who are believed uh, to believe, uh, believe to belong to this camp. Uh, that was led by the vi former vice president uh, will uh, be receiving some sort of uh, you know, disciplinary action from the ruling party. Maybe. Well, it certainly seems then that Zimbabweans are having to brace themselves for some serious political changes. Uh, but of course, Farai, at this point, no deputy or VP has been named. How are analysts viewing this, this uh, particular development? Well, many analysts expect that uh, a VP will be named at Congress that is due next year. Uh, many thinking that the president is not exercising his right under the Constitution to, a name, to name a vice president now uh, because he wants to wait for that Congress, which is also meant to uh, amend the ZANU-PF Constitution to, uh, to allow for a female vice president. There was a provision in the ZANU-PF uh, Constitution that made it mandatory that one of the vice presidential positions would be reserved for a woman. Uh, this Congress that is coming up next month was meant to uh, return or uh, bring back that provision and so uh, many expect that the president will, was is waiting to exercise his right of appointing a vice president for that Congress so he can also then uh, you know effectively kill two birds with one stone uh, appoint a vice president and in doing so appoint a female vice president to fulfill that uh, uh, you know commitment and that uh, requirement of the ZANU-PF constitution uh, obviously a few names are being mentioned particularly obviously when you talk about that female vice presidential position the the head of the Women's League, who is the First Lady. Some people have been mentioning her. There's certainly the party's Youth League has said that they endorse her to take up that position. So we'll wait and see. But many expect that next month is when that appointment to replace Vice President Mnangagwa will be made. Well, indeed, all eyes then on the President ahead of that uh, party congress next month. Thanks very much, uh, Farai Mokutuya, joining us there live from Harare, Zimbabwe.